ran Istanbul, Turkey for the 2011 World Championships. We're at 84 kilograms. That's Kale Sanderson in the red. This is his comeback year. He won gold at the Athens 2004 Olympics. Now he's wrestling for a bronze. Lost in the second round, the round of 32, to Sharif. Sharif off of Azerbaijan. Fought his way back through the repechage. And now he's got one more match to add a bronze medal to his collection. That's a young Albert Saritov in the blue. Saritov wrestling for Russia. We're recording this in 2020. So we know that uh, in the hindsight of uh, nine plus years, that uh, Saritov goes on to wrestle for Romania, where he'll win a medal at the 2016 Olympics. But right now, he's a fresh faced Russian. He's from Dagestan, hotbed of wrestling in the southern part of Russia in the uh, Caucasus Mountains. Action underway. It's the best two out of three rule set. So three two minute periods. You can end it in two if you win the first two in a row. And we get a warning, no locked fingers. That's a, uh, this is when United World Wrestling was known as FILA, and they had the referees do their job in uh, coat and ties. There's down on a single leg at Sanderson. So Ritoff fights off the attack from the Penn State head coach. Either uh, lost bet, I think, is the story to come back uh, and make another run at it. Um, retired from international competition after his Olympic gold in 2004, went right into coaching. Was at his alma mater, Iowa State, for a few years and took over Penn State program. And we know now that he turned it into one of the uh, best college dynasties ever. Um, obviously, Gable's Iowa teams. Still have a ways to go to match them, but uh, after that, you got to start talking about Penn State. And uh, Kale is still young and got a lot of years left to go. Another low-level attack, Saritov, keeping his distance, tying up the fingers there. Not a lot of time left. Uh, there's no criteria at this point. They go to a ball draw. It's an overtime period that starts in a clinch, and whoever has the clinch, a leg clinch, uh, is determined by a random draw of either a red or blue-colored a uh, little bag or a little whatever. It's a ball that they uncover, and inside is a red or blue colored object. And that will determine who gets the leg to, uh, leg pinch to start the overtime period. But Saritov, uh, as mentioned, he's young. He's not very large. They go down. Oh, there's the best chance of scoring for Sanderson this period, as I'm explaining those rules. Tries to come around. Is in on a shot. Nobody goes out of bounds, and nobody scores. So it's 0-0, zero, zero and... Kale gets the honor of uh, reaching into the fishbowl here and pulling out a ball that the referee will open up. And now he will show everyone blue. It was a blue ball, so Sanderson loses the draw. That means Saritov will start with the clinch. Haven't really seen much offense from Saritov. It's kind of hanging back like he was planning to get to this overtime period. He knew he had a 50-50 shot of uh, having the advantage. Usually when you win the draw, and you start with the clinch as Kale has to put his hands up. So Ritov has to go underneath, grab a leg, head on the outside. And then the whistle, it's almost like a running start. So there's Saritov in the overtime period, has Kale hopping on one leg. Kale, Kale tries to jump away, tries to hip over. They award the two there, or I mean they award the one, and, uh, Takedowns are just one point, so that's it. That's the whole period as they go to their corners. There's Kale's brother Cody and the assistant coach, Casey Cunningham, doing the uh, overhand flap lengthwise. Kind of the same technique used in Saritov's corner. So Saritov may realize, maybe he realized he was outmatched here, um, skill-wise and athletic-wise, athletically. So just kind of wanted to stall to that overtime period. It's unfortunate. It's not the best rule set if I could editorialize for a moment. But now all Saritov has to do is follow that same game plan and force another draw to get into a clinch and, and make it a 50-50 bout. So we'll see what happens. Sanderson... Moving around, staying active. Saritov holding center. 
Not really doing much except uh, interlocking fingers, which is still against the rules. And he's locking up both hands. Sanderson goes for a leg. Now he gets a side headlock. Sarutov fights out of it. Takes a big gulp of air back to the center. Collar tie. Sanderson trying to set up a shot. He wants to finish this on the mat. He wants to finish this in the regulation. Saritov wants to just keep him at bay. There is no shot clocks. There's no activity clock. 30-second activity clock, as it's known now. You just can't get, I mean, there is passivity. There is, you can get called for uh, caution. But it's rare, and especially not when Saritov is holding center. A couple stutter steps, nothing serious. Sanderson, less than a minute to work. Now he's in on a single leg, but... You know, that ankle pick, Saritov probably had that scouted. There's lots of tape on Sanderson at this point. Obviously, you're in the Olympics. You get a lot, of, a lot of eyeballs on you. So he straightens his leg out, stops Sanderson's bread and butter under a minute. Saritov clearly happy to go to that overtime period. Not at all interested in uh, mixing it up here on the mat against the more experienced and uh, looks to be more physically imposing Sanderson. Still in the center. Sanderson changing levels. Looking for something. Saritov is kind of crouched over in a defensive position. Not even looking for an underhook. Or even a good tie. Sanderson again on a leg. Saritov looking for a Merkel position. Slips in a leg. Has the front head there in quad pot position. But time runs out. It's the unofficial scoreboard clock on the bottom there. We're trying to score this and keep the clock to the best of our Abilities, but either way, it uh, was not called in time. So Sanderson kind of saved by the whistle there, maybe, but either way, we get another ball draw. It's Saritov's turn. He hands the ball to the referee, and it is red. So the uh, law of averages is maintained. Each guy gets his shot at clinch. So now Sanderson gets to go in there. He'll have the advantage. Saritov got what he wanted by stalling to get to the overtime period, but he did not get the color that he wanted. So Sanderson going underneath. Saritov's got to keep his arm open. And there they go. He's got the single leg. Got Saritov hopping. He's got to finish this to force that third period. Saritov keeping his leg in good position. Doing the splits. Now he goes for an ankle of Kale's. Now Kale has him in the quad pod trying to break him down. He sits on his butt and they don't call this a takedown. This is not a one, they say. They're saying... Kale is on his butt. Saritov is still in the quad pod. He's trying to turn, and then he backs into Kale. The same position that Burroughs used to score on Gudarzi in the finals. And they say Saritov scored that. And we're going to go to video review. Of course, Yolo Brick, no reason not to throw that. Uh, we'll see what happens here, but... This will be the match, and this will be with a bronze medal on the line. So I guess this is what happens when uh, you allow guys to stall for that extra period, and then you turn it into a toss-up. Not ideal, I would say. Are they both in the corner? And, yep, they call it a two, so it's going to be one extra point. And that's it. Kale Sanderson has to settle for fifth place. Albert Saritov wins a bronze for Russia. He will then transfer countries and wrestle for Romania, as mentioned earlier. That's the end of Kale's international career, unfortunately.